In this video, I'm going to demonstrate service chaining functionality orchestrated by Nuage Networks VSP between Docker containers and Firewall VM. The container management engine used here is Kubernetes. I'm also going to provide an overview of Nuage and Kubernetes integration. We will start by examining some of the most common challenges that arise in the controller environments and see how Nuage addresses them. Nuage can help address one of the most common challenges in the container cloud environment, which is multi-tenancy and application isolation. Nuage has full control over the IP addressing scheme. We support hybrid environments. This can be composed of containers, VMs, bare metal servers. Nuage can also deploy containers on a public cloud as well as on premises or in hybrid environments. We provide a very flexible and granular security policy framework, one of the key differentiators of Nuage. Let's examine briefly how Nuage integrates with Kubernetes. Let's suppose we have a Kubernetes cluster consisting of two minions and one master. We deploy Nuage components, components consisting of virtualized services director, controller and virtualized routing and switching module which we deploy on every minion. VSD and VSC use XMPP while VSC and VRS communicate over OpenFlow. In order to integrate Nuage on Kubernetes, we deploy a Nuage plugin on each minion. This is an implementation of the Kubernetes network plugin. It is invoked whenever a pod is created or destroyed. Another component that we deploy on the master node is Nuage Cube Monitor. It communicates with the VSD via the API interface and is used to automate certain tasks, like zone and subnet provisioning when a new namespace is created in Kubernetes, for example. Let's look now at the demo architecture. First, we are going to create a two-tier infrastructure in Nuage with a front-end and back-end subnet. Then, we're going to deploy a container application consisting of two pods, a web portal in the front end and a database pod in the back end. We will see how Nuage interconnects and ensures policy enforcement between the two pods. Next, we will deploy a firewall VM on one of the minions and see how easy it is to steer the traffic to this VM for inspection. And at last, we will access this application from the Internet. This is the topology that we will be using to demonstrate the integration. We may see the Kubernetes cluster composed of the master and two computes, the Nuage components composed of VSD, VSC and Elasticsearch VM, as well as the jump box that provides us with external connectivity to the lab components. Let's now move to the demo. So we connect to the Kubernetes master. We can see that uh, we have three nodes in the Kubernetes cluster, one master and two minions. Uh, we may see that there are currently no pods in the default namespace. If we specify all namespaces keyword, we may see the service containers, which are in the cube system namespace. Uh, moving to Nuage VSD, we see that there are currently two zones, which correspond to two namespaces, default and cube system. Uh, what we're going to do is create a third zone called WordPress. In this zone, we'll create two subnets, front-end for WordPress web portal pod and the back-end for WordPress MySQL pod. Next, next we move to the Policies tab, where we create two policy groups, front-end and back-end. So, once we spin up our WordPress application, the containers will be put into these policy groups uh, thanks to the metadata that we'll be providing. 
we can see that there are ingress and egress security policies. Uh, everything is enabled by default, so they allow all traffic to pass. And we move to the uh, redirection targets. Uh, so the redirection targets will be used for service chaining and will contain firewall interfaces, one for each. The infrastructure is now ready for application deployment. We will use a YAML definition file for the whole environment. It is composed of the persistent volumes, which are pointing to local folders on one of our minions, one for the web portal and one for the MySQL container. Next we have the service, uh, persistent volume claims and deployment for each pod, front and the end. It is important to note uh, the metadata used to connect the containers to Nuage. It is composed of the zone, subnet, user and policy group. Let's now create the whole environment. As we see, the pods are being created and we can also see them connected to Nuage right away. When the containers are running, before accessing them, we need to create a net rule or jump box uh, for internet access. For this, we need a WordPress portal service IP address, which we will use in our IP tables role. Once the rule is created, we can see that we have access to the WordPress portal. Now, let's try to disable the allow all rules to see how this impacts internet access to our deployment. We can see that the portal says connecting and the page can be reloaded. If we re-enable the security policy, we can see that the WordPress site is available again. This brings us to the last part of our demo, the service chaining. We will now spin up a firewall virtual machine on one of our minions. It's not actually a firewall, but just a CentOS VM with two interfaces and IP forwarding active. We will be using a pre-provisioned libvirt.xml file. As uh, in the container case, it's worth mentioning the metadata used for Nuage connection. In this case, we will be connecting one interface to the front-end subnet and another to the back-end. We define and start the VM. As soon as the VM is started, we may see that it appeared in Nuage. The containers are blue and the VMs are green. Let's now do the service chaining part. First, we add firewalls interfaces into the previously created redirection targets. Next, we create a forwarding policy where we add two roles. The first one is for front-end to back-end direction. It will trigger when containers from front-end policy group, in our case WordPress portal, 
we'll be trying to communicate with the backend policy group, MySQL database. When this communication happens, we need to redirect it to the front-end firewall interface. The second rule is the same but in the other direction. Traffic coming from backend to frontend needs to be redirected to the backend firewall interface. Now, as you see, I have deliberately left the forwarding policy inactive. Let's now log into the firewall machine. We see that it has received IP addresses on both interfaces. We can launch a TCP dump on one of the interfaces to see the traffic that is currently received by the firewall VM. If we generate some traffic on the WordPress portal, we see that there is no traffic at all. This is normal because the forwarding policy isn't active yet. Now let's activate the policy and see what happens. If we try to generate traffic, we see that now it is being redirected to and forwarded by the firewall. This demonstrates how simple it is to connect containers and VM using Nuage. This concludes our demo. In case if you are interested in more details about our integration with Kubernetes, you can always see our Kubernetes Container Networking webinar by visiting the URL displayed.